guys, welcome back to Coldest Coasters. Today, we are back with the rankings video. We are going to rank all the roller coasters I've ridden, not including the kids' coasters or rides I have not ridden at the same park. All right, so it's going to be top 32 roller coasters. So let's get straight into the ranking. Number 32, Adventure Express at Kings Island. This era mine train isn't the smoothest. That's why it's on the lowest part of my list. So it is very rough, and on the turns, it gives you that big jank. You get jostle. That's why it's on the lowest part of my list. All right, number 31, Cedar Creek Mine Ride at Cedar Point. This era mine train, same type as Adventure Express. It is, it is smoother than Adventure Express because it is slower. And the Metro Express is longer. Cedar Creek Mine Ride is a really good ride. Because it's a good family coaster. That's why it's on number 31 above the Metro Express. Number 30, Corkscrew. This Aero Looper at Cedar Point is... It's pretty rough. So go check out my POV of Corkscrew in the link in the description. I also did Cedar Creek Mine Ride and Adventure Express. So go check out those POVs in the link in the description. So Corkscrew is an arrow looper and it is not the smoothest. I say that because when you go into the Corkscrews and you sit in the very back row, it is very shaky and very jostly. And... The airtime hill before the loop is, it gives you a pretty good amount of airtime. That's why I kind of like this ride, just a, a little bit. All right, number 29, Iron Dragon. It's aerodynamics, suspended coaster. It is, I mean, it's not bad, but it's also not good. It is a very long ride, but it's not very intense, not very fast. But it is very rough because it does shake you quite a bit. So that's why it's on the lower part of my list. Number 28, in Vertigo at Kings Island. This Vekoma Boomerang isn't the best because it is very whippy, which kind of causes some head banging. And my favorite part is sitting in the front. I call it the front, AKA back. Because if you sit in the very front, you're also going forwards and backwards. But if you sit in the front, a.k.a. back, you do get some good whippiness when you go backwards. I do have a piece of paper that shows all the rides, so I have to flip that. Right. Next ride, number 27, Wild Mouse at Cedar Point. This Zampera spinning coaster is actually not too bad. But the reason why it's on the lower part of my list is because it's a family coaster. It's not made for, like, adults or, like, people that, like, intense rides. But this ride does spin you quite a bit. That's why it's actually on the higher part of my list. Number 26, Cobra's Curse at Bush Gardens, Tampa. Cobra's Curse. This ride is not bad, but... I wish it was longer, more f faster. I just wish it was a better fast paced ride, but it does when you go backwards, it does get some good air time and some good G-force. But if you spin those overbanks, not really overbanks, more like hammerheads, they do give you a good spin, like Wild Mouse, but it's just, not the best ride. All right, number 25, the racer at Kings Island. The first one coaster on this list is, the racer is pretty smooth. They are retracting the blue side, the ending of the blue side next year, for next year. So it is gonna be a very smooth ride. Both sides are gonna be fully retracted by the gravity group. So it's basically gonna be a gravity group ride instead of PTC. Number 24, Backlot Stunt Coaster at Kings Island. This Premier Rides Launch Coaster is a pretty intense ride, but I just wish the launch was more forceful. I wish it was like, three, two, launch. 
They just go three, two, one, and then you launch. I want an unexpected launch. I want it to just. Ugh. That triple helix, that upward helix, is very, very nice. It is very intense. It turns very sharp. Especially the fire, you go into that tunnel. It is a very good ride. Number 23, Flight of Fear, also at Kings Island. This premier ride, same manufacturer's backlog, is a pretty good ride. When I went to Winterfest recently, we rode this ride. And it is a very good ride. But when you go out of the Cobra Roll, you launch and you go into this Cobra Roll. The track is still banked at the bottom. And then it, like, straightens itself out. And it gives you a very good, like, jerk. So you got to watch out for that. And the best part about this ride is the launch. The operators just say, three, two, and then you just launch. Or all clear. Bye, and then you just launch. It's probably my favorite part about that ride. Number 22, the bat at Keens Island. This aero suspended coaster, it's basically the same type of ride as Iron Dragon, but it is way more intense, way faster. It is, and it does get a little jerky. It has gotten jerkier over the years. That's why it's on the lower part of my list. If you watch my rankings video from like two years ago, I used to have this number one. Now I have this all the way down on my number 22 on my top 32 rides. Number 21, Gemini at Cedar Point. This Aero Hybrid is actually a very good ride. The reason why is because it does have a lot of sharp air time but the one thing, the one downside of this ride is the jerkiness. It does get very bouncy on so like the turnarounds and the airtime hills. So that's why it's a little lower on my list. Number 20, Blue Streak, also at Cedar Point. This PTC wind coaster is probably the roughest ride at Cedar Point. Not the roughest, but one of the roughest because if you sit in the very back row, go check out the POV in the link. Oh, it's very rough. If you sit in the very back row, it's probably the roughest spot. So don't sit in the back. I recommend sitting like closer to the front to where you get the smoother ride. That's why it's so low on my Cedar Point list. Number 19, Scorpion at Bush Gardens Tampa. The reason why this ride is so high is because it's probably one of my favorites at Bush Gardens because it's just so fast it is it is a classic it is such a classic because if you go in that helix it's so intense to where it's like crazy so that's why this ride's actually higher on my list number 18 Kumba also at Bush Gardens Tampa this B&M sit down is not the best the reason why it's so low on my list is because when we first read it, it was the roughest thing I have ever written. I thought it would be like super smooth, but it was rough. So don't sit on the outside, sit on the inside where you get the smoother ride. That's why it's so low on my list. Number 17, Tigress, also at Bush Gardens Tampa. This premier ride, Skyrocket 2, is a very a very insane ride. The reason why is because when you go into the third launch, you go up the tower and then you go into that slow roll. You get very good hang time, which is the reason why I really like this ride. But the one downside is when you go up that twist, you gotta keep your head back and stiff because it will give you a big ooh. That's why this ride is also low on my list. Number 16, Banshee at Kings Island. This B&M invert is not my favorite because the restraints on this thing hurt. You get like smushed. So you gotta be aware on the bottom of that first drop, they tighten to where it's like you can't breathe. That's how tight it gets. So it's like, Oh, 
That's why this ride is very low, even though it's actually a pretty decent ride. The screen, the Banshee screen before you drop is actually a pretty good theming point. Number 15, The Beast at King's Island. I used to have this ride very high on my list just because of the smoothness and the classic feeling. Well, that smoothness feeling's kind of gone away. The new track that Gravity Group put on has gotten a little shakier and rougher. Because those trains, those PTC trains are very heavy. And that makes the track wear out faster. That's why the ride is so bouncy and shaky. So that's why the beast is lower than it used to be on my list. Number 14, Rougarou at Cedar Point. This BM&M floorless coaster is a pretty good ride. But the one downside of this ride is the shakiness. You gotta watch out when you go into that mid course and into the corkscrew. It does give you a little rattle, especially in that dive loop. It does give you a pretty strong rattle to it. But if you sit on the outside, like Kumba, if you sit on the outside, it's rough. If you sit on the inside, it's smoother. But it's still very shaky. Number 13. Val Raven at Cedar Point. Hey. Hey. This BM dive is a pretty decent ride, actually. But it does have the vest restraints that can make the ride uncomfortable. So, it is a pretty. not the best ride. What are you doing in here? Hey, I'm just doing this video. We got a special guest. Hi, I'm Colby's dad. Noah. Noah. <laughs> this kid right here, he's one of the best on on uh, coaster design. What's that game you play? Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster. Look out for this, this kid in the future. <laughs> All right. Back to the list. Number 13, Vera Raven. Like I said, this ride has the best restraints, which make the ride a little uncomfortable. It does tighten like Banshees does. It is very squished. You get so squished to where it's like you're suffocating almost. That's why this ride is not on the highest part of my list. Number 12, Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. This B&M wing coaster is not bad, but like Val Raven, it has the best, which make the ride uncomfortable. But that wing over drop is insane. <clears throat> If you sit in the front, you get very good hang time when you go into the, you're slowly turning and you're literally upside down and you're like getting some good hang time. But those vests make it to where it's not the best ride. It, those keyholes are like insane. You get some good head choppers and leg choppers. That's why I really like this ride. Number 11, Raptor at Cedar Point. This B&M Invert is actually a pretty good ride because it doesn't have the vest restraints like Banshee does. And it has those B&M classic restraints like Rougarou and Kumba have. That's why I really like this ride. And the whippiness is insane, especially on that Cobra roll. And those Windover corkscrews. Those those are insane. So you should probably look out for this ride and ride it. It is an insane ride. Number 10, Montu at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This B&M Invert is pretty good. It's pretty much like Raptor, but Raptor is a little bit longer than Montu. Montu is just like Raptor, but crazier. That's why it's higher than it. Montu, is whippy insanely whippy especially in that bat wing if you go in the back row that bat wing is probably whippier than raptor's cobra roll that's why this ride is like probably one of the highest so that was my number 10 and my top 10. number nine Sheikra bush gardens tampa this bnm dive coaster same type as bow raven is definitely better than bow raven because it has the B&M restraints that all 
like Rougarou, Val, not Val Raven, Rougarou, Raptor, Montu have. And I like these restraints because they don't tighten. You can't get stapled. That's why I really like this ride, especially on that dive. It is probably one of the tallest rides at Bush Gardens. And that dive, you're just hanging there, waiting to be dropped. And you drop, and then you go into the layout. Especially that splashdown. That splashdown is pretty crazy. Number eight, Mystic Timber is at Kings Island. This GCI wind coaster is a pretty good ride. So check out the POV that I just posted like three days ago or four. It is a very good POV, especially the night ride on this ride is insane. You fly through the ride, go by the train, especially during Winterfest. Cause you see all the lights that's by the train and the Eiffel Tower. That's why I really like this ride. But it has gotten a little shakier over the years. That's why it's a little lower on my list. Number seven, Cheetah Hunt at Bush Gardens Tampa. This Intamin Blitz Coaster is actually a pretty decent ride. The reason why I like this one is because the launch is very forceful and especially that second launch into the figure eight is probably my favorite part of the ride. The one downside is um, the water. The water down when you go into those S bends. Sometimes it's not on, but it was on when we rode it. But I think the first time we rode it, it wasn't on. So, Bush Gardens, keep the water on so we can see it. Number six, Orion at Kings Island. It's B&M Hyper Giga. I call it a Giga because the drop is 300 feet. The reason why this is not making it into my top five is the ride's very short, but the pacing is pretty crazy, especially that speed hill before the tall camelback. The speed hill gives you a very good pop of air time, especially that turn into the brake run. The little pop that you get into the brake run is very good floater and pop into the brake run. That's why I kind of like this ride. But it's not into my top five. My top five, number five, is Diamondback at Kings Island. This B&M Hyper is actually better than Orion. The reason why I say it's better is because it's longer and it has more airtime. Orion's more about the pacing. Diamondback's more about the airtime. Especially if you sit in the back. I've never sat in the back because I don't want to get soaked. Because you send the back and the splash down, when you go into the break run, the water's coming right back at you. You can feel it. If you're not sitting in the back, you still get your legs a little sprinkle of water. That's why I like diving back, because you get a little nice, cool water. Number four, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This Intamin Giga Coaster, which was built in 2000, is the tallest coaster at the time. In 2000, it was the tallest roller coaster. This ride is a pretty impressive ride. It is, the pacing is perfect, especially those airtime hills. They don't get as, as much as airtime as I thought they would, but they still give you pretty good airtime. Kind of like floater, especially at Speed Hill before the second tunnel. But the ride's more of um, the overbanks and the turns and the low to ground turns, and a little bit of airtime, especially that speed hill before the last overbank. That is pretty crazy airtime there. Top three, number three, Maverick at Cedar Point. This Intamin Blitz, same type as Cheetah Hunt, is even crazier than Cheetah Hunt. This is like the most insane ride I have ever ridden. This thing is like intense. Especially those S bends, it gets insane. That second launch, you should probably keep your head back on that second launch because it really pushes you. And then into the trims, the trims do slow down a little bit, but the ride's still really good. Especially that snangle dive before the airtime hill into the brake run. It is a pretty crazy part of the ride. Number two, my top two. Number two. Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens, Tampa. This RMC Hyper Hybrid is insane. 
But it doesn't make my number one. I'm not telling you my number one yet. It is, Iron Gwazi is insane. The airtime is like perfect. Especially that airtime hill before the break run. It is insane. You get floaty airtime there. And that outer bank is like the most intense part of the ride. And if you send the very back, that death roll whips you down that. And then the overbank is pretty intense too. Alright, number one. A ride you've all been waiting for. My number one is Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. This RMC Hyper Hybrid is way more insane than Iron Gwazi. The reason why it makes my number one is the airtime. The airtime on this ride is insane. You get so much airtime. You're like floating almost the whole ride. Especially that downward stall. Oh man, that's like the most insane part of the ride. And the brake run, the mid course does slow it down a little bit, but that doesn't ruin the pacing. The pacing is like perfect on this ride. That's why it makes my number one. Steel Vengeance is my top one, my f number one ride I've ever ridden. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 32 rankings video. Subscribe for more rankings videos and POVs. Bye guys.